you know, as I say, I, I, I didn't even, I didn't click it twice. Nothing happened. It's just, it just doesn't mean that we go and go your ride.
Well, good morning to you all. I've um, picked up some funny noises uh, here in uh, on my computer, so I'm not quite sure who's where it's coming from, as I thought I turned everybody off. But do just ask you please to double check that your um, that your microphone is off. So I'm now getting a feedback. I will just sort one thing out here where I think the problem might be. Okay, discovered what was going on. Good. Well, very good morning to you all. Um, we're trying. I'm trying a new thing, which is to um, uh, live stream to YouTube this morning. And in fact, what was happening was my uh, computer was playing back the, the uh, YouTube stream at the same time. So that was where I was getting funny noises from. Anyway, welcome to you all. Welcome to St. Andrews. Welcome to our time of worship together this morning. It really is wonderful to be able to together and um, despite our, our distance from one another to just experience something of the blessing of uh, God's love and the activity of the Spirit uh, holding us together in these times. A uh, reminder, please, if you um, haven't yet, just to find the chat tab at the bottom of the page, uh, the bottom of your screen, and just indicate um, how many of you are participating with us from your, from your home this morning. And then also to ask that, um, as I said, please keep the microphones off. Uh, we welcome uh, Freya as our lay minister this morning and Mags as our responder. And Mags, just to ask that you turn your microphone on, please. Um, so when you hear Mags's voice, uh, that should correlate with the words in bold and invite you to, to uh, respond from behind your microphone at that point. Um, at the end of the service, I'm going to offer an opportunity for us to break, to go into what's called breakaway groups. Um, so it just puts three or four of us into a little room where we can just say hello to each other because it's wonderful to greet everyone, but one might also just want to have a conversation that's not with, with 50 other people. So you don't have to participate in that, and I'll warn you when that's going to happen. But if you would like to, uh, that will be an opportunity literally for five minutes. Um, but like having a cup of tea or a chat as you walk down the path to the uh, to the car park, so that's the that's the plan there. But again, we will we will confirm that uh, at at the end before I before I shove you in where you don't want to go. Um, we welcome Bishop Jeff as our preacher this morning, uh, and we welcome my parents Tim and Christine Long from uh, all the way from Ested in the UK. They are our our scripture readers this morning. So lovely to have you all with us, and we now come to just embrace this time of worship together. Uh, we have a moment of silence as we begin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise God, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, creator, redeemer, and spirit of truth. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. Let us joyfully proclaim together, glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify, <clears throat> excuse me, your holy name through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In a moment of silence, let us call to mind and then confess our sins firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. And we confess together. Almighty God, our heavenly father, in penitence, we confess that we have sinned against you, <clears throat> excuse me, through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you heal the sick and restore the distressed. Make us agents of your he he healing and wholeness, that your good news may be experienced through creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kirsty will now read our first lesson. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 40 beginning at verse 21. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary or tired, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like angel, eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not be faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We now say together Psalm 90, beginning at the first verse. 
I shall I shall begin if you could please say the alternate verses. Alleluia. How good it is to sing praises to you, O God. How pleasant it is to honor you with praise. You rebuild Jerusalem and gather the exiles of Israel. You heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. You count the number of the stars and call them all by their names. Great are you and mighty in power. There is no limit to your wisdom. You lift up the lowly, but cast the wicked to the ground. We sing to you, Most High, with thanksgiving. We make music to you upon the harp. For you cover the heavens with clouds and prepare rain for the earth. You make grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve humankind. You provide food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. You are not impressed by the might of a horse. You have no pleasure in human strength. Let us pray. King of the universe, whose wisdom gives order and fruitfulness to the earth, help us to respond trustfully to your call, that being drawn into the unity of your kingdom, we may continually praise you for your providential care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And Tim will now share the gospel. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the first chapter of the gospel according to Mark, beginning at the 29th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, grant to us openness of mind and heart and readiness of will. Without you, we cannot please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit would lead us to seek you first, to know your will and to walk in your way. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Where is God in all that's happening to us at the moment? Life as we knew it a year ago has disappeared. So many things have changed. We almost get tired of hearing it, I'm sure, but we know that we have limited freedom of movement. We know that millions of jobs have been lost. Livelihoods are threatened. Education has been restricted. Family and friends cannot meet and are often cut off. And socializing is affected. And as the pandemic goes on, many of us are beginning to know people who are sick from COVID and indeed know people 
who have died prematurely from it. I hear in all sides people speaking of depression and loneliness and fear. And that fear is not helped too much by the television that tends to feed us with the same news all the time. Perhaps we should restrict a little bit the way we listen to it. And all of this is happening at a time when world leadership seems to be very, very much in decline. The few leaders that seem to have authority to lead seem to be using it for the most part in unjust and ungodly ways. And when we look at the church, it's also true that there too we have been radically affected. Attendance is, is limited and clergy and finances are affected. I could see a time when buildings may become redundant or some. And I could also see the possibility of some clergy unable to be supported financially any longer for the ministry they exercise. It's a gloomy picture. So where is God in all of this? When I read Isaiah chapter 40, I sense that people were asking the same kind of questions. And they were often responding by saying that God was absent or that God didn't know their situation. Or if he did, he didn't care. The circumstances in which the Jews were when Isaiah was writing to them was that they had been in exile in Babylon far from their own home for anything close to 70 years. Jerusalem, their capital, had been destroyed. The temple no longer existed, that center of their faith. And the promise of an ongoing Davidic kingship had also apparently come to an end. So faith and hope were in at a low ebb, whilst at the same time they saw all the signs of a prosperous paganism and idolatry exercised around them in Babylon. We know from experience that when things are hard, and especially when we are suffering, there is a tendency to focus on ourselves and to go into ourselves. And so, so Isaiah, when he is wanting to help his people, is seeking to move them away from precisely that tendency. He wants to lift their eyes back to God, to renew their faith, to show them the source from which he comes. And so he speaks of God as the mighty one, the creator. He says of Babylon that seems so great, and indeed all the nations of the world, he speaks of them and says, they're a mere drop in the bucket compared with the enormity that we believe in in God. He tells the people to go out and to look up at the night sky. And because they didn't suffer from light pollution the way we do, they would have seen many, many stars. And then the, Isaiah was saying, and remember, God knows them all by number. And he has given them all a name. And then he goes on to repeat in a way their own questioning and give it a response. I read again from verse 27. Why do you say my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not heard? Have you not known? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint and weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. And then Isaiah goes on to show them another way to move away from this self-centeredness, not just to put their eyes on God, but also to wait on God, a way of keeping their eyes on him. Those famous words that come at the end of this marvelous chapter. 
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But to wait upon the Lord means what it says. He's the Lord and we are the waiters. And it's his will that we're about, not ours. That's the great movement, really, in Isaiah, in the scriptures, and in the gospel. The movement from self towards God. And if you look at the very opening words of the next chapter in Isaiah, the Lord says, listen to me in silence. When we move to our reading from Mark's gospel, we find some of the same kind of emphasis being brought home to us. Jesus has been effectively and powerfully teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. And people were impressed with the authority with which he spoke. But then he also cast out a demon from one of the persons in the congregation. Afterwards, he, together with James and John and Andrew, moved to Simon's house for lunch. And there, when he enters the house, they tell him straight away that the mother-in-law of Simon is sick in bed with fever. And Jesus goes, and Mark is always using the word immediately or words to that effect. And it says he straight away healed her, so much so that she actually got up and provided the meal for them. It was Sabbath. But when the Sabbath ended at the time when the sun went down, which in Jewish law was when the Sabbath came to an end, then we're told that lots of people from the village came to the door of Simon's house and were asking Jesus for ministry in healing or deliverance. And Jesus does all of that. We're not even told what time he got to bed. But my guess is it might have been quite late. This is where Mark makes the point that is coming through in Isaiah. He says that Jesus, early in the morning, while it was still dark, went to a lonely place to pray. He's seeking God. He's waiting on his father. He's searching to put the priorities of ministry in place. And because he's about God's business and not his own, it's significant what happens next. Simon comes along and says, come, come, Lord, all the people are waiting for you. They want more ministry. And Jesus says, no, now we must move on to the neighboring town because that's why I have come. In other words, he's not about pleasing people. He's about pleasing God. And the perspective from which he works is what is God asking me to do? I hear a lot of people, and one of the debates is, can we not get back to normal? And so it's worth asking what normal is, because in my opinion, it's as destructive as what we're finding at the moment. What we were settled with was a consumerism and a greed, which was effectively destroying life and life on the planet. Our scientists have been telling us for years about pollution and global warming. But the God of, mercy, the God of money dominates in the um, corporates and it dominates in the populace. We're constantly being fed with the idea that if you do this or that, you'll get another 100,000 or something. The God of money is at the forefront. Have you ever wondered why it is that the casinos remained open while the churches had to close in lockdown? But behind all of this, there are also horrors too. The horrors of human trafficking, where thousands of girls 
and children are being caught, taken away and used and misused, where the drug cartels and the gangs make violence and the destruction of human lives their daily business. But what about politics? I've spoken about the lack of leadership, but we've lived for the last 10 years with a government that's operated like a mafia, stolen trillions of rock. And ironically, not one in high places has yet been brought to justice and condemned in the courts. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. But what I'm describing is darkness. And it remains dark until we put God back in the center of things. We are called to be children of light. Jesus makes it very clear what the gospel is really about. He says, if you want to save your life, if you want to just do what you want, live with yourself at the center, you lose life. But if you lose your life for my sake and the gospel, if you give yourself away, if you change your center of concern, then you will find life. I said I didn't want the world to go back to normal. What about the church? I don't think I want that to go back to normal either. So often we're preaching a man, or if you like, a woman-centered gospel about our needs, about how this person or other can be blessed. Of course God blesses and meets our needs. But God is not about our business. He's calling us into a centering on him and on his kingdom. I don't want to go back to a church in which the clergy are so busy working for God that they have little time to spend with God. And there's so little of real deep prayer in those who are called to minister. And I know there's some good exceptions. But it is significant that the activities of what we call church life have a lot, very little to do with the gospel in many instances. Why is it that we teach prayer so little when we're doing so many other things that we say are about God? I have confirmed in my ministry over 40,000 people I don't want to go back to that church either, where numbers of those being brought in and confirmed who do not know the essence of the gospel and certainly have no commitment to it does not become our way of life. Numbers are not everything. Buildings are not everything. We have to find a way of ministering in which we build people up. And I believe that the small group is of the essence of the church. And if we're not participating at that level, in one sense, we don't discover the gospel. So where is God in all this? I believe it's very evidently at work, calling us into a life that centers on him. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be yours as well. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Listen to me in silence. And I believe that when God's people do that, they begin to know his will, learn and learn the things he wants us to do. And yet there's one other key aspect that also has to be said. When we know what God wants us to do, we can't do it. We are utterly dependent on the presence of God in us. And of course, we still have to act, and we still have to speak, and we still have to work, and we still have to meet, and it's our personality that's at work that God is working through. But we have to surrender to the Christ within us so that mm -hmm. the Christ is seen in all that we do and say and think. So God is at work. And I believe that as we turn to him, with that kind of awareness, God will change his church and renew it, beginning with us. 
Let us pray. Lord, thank you for all that you are. Thank you for your word that speaks powerfully to us, not least today. Teach us to pray. Teach us to listen. Teach us to center again on you. To find light instead of darkness. And to be agents of change in a world that is groping again for meaning. And thank you that you hear our prayer. Amen. And we continue now in prayer. We pray for our world. We pray for vaccine programs throughout the world. We pray for equity in the allocation of resources between and within countries. We continue to pray for the doctors and frontline medical workers, as well as those involved in all essential services. We pray for their physical health and well being, as well as their emotional and spiritual wellness. We pray for those affected directly and indirectly by the global pandemic, those who are sick, those who've lost loved ones, who've lost livelihoods. Make us agents of healing and wholeness as we continue to wrestle with this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our planet. We pray in particular for the areas being affected continuously and unrelentingly by climate change. And so we ask you, God, make us agents of healing and wholeness to our planet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our country. We pray for the welfare of the poorest and neediest among us. Help us to balance public and private interest in all facets of society as we rebuild this country, our home. We pray for our president as he prepares for a state of the nation address. And we pray for this very divided nation. We pray for those who are inconvenienced by lockdowns and those whose lives are, have been irrevocably changed. Those whose lives continue to be uncertain and precarious. We also pray today for those at every level of education as they prepare for the upcoming academic programs. And so we ask you, Lord, make us agents of healing and wholeness in our divided and struggling nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our city today. As we pray for the crises of our country and we see them on a local level. Help us to attend to problems that seem to have no end. And so we ask you, make us agents of healing and wholeness within our wider city. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray today for our church and our community. As we continue to balance the various needs of our own community, we ask for your direction in these strange times. We raise up those who are struggling within our own neighborhoods and we pray for the sick within our parish as they're listed in our pew leaflet. We pray too for those who are bereaved. We recognize that each and every name, each and every statistic is a person, a life, an integral part of a family and community. Make us agents of healing and wholeness in our St. Andrew's family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our friends and families, our co-workers, those we carry in our hearts. We celebrate the happy events and we commiserate and empathize with the losses. We remember those close to us who are ill, those who are recuperating, and anyone who struggles with any aspect of life at the moment. We pray for those who have died, those whose lives are remembered with joy, people who have shaped us, those whose death still to this day carries an echo of pain. Social distancing has made connection more difficult, but so much more necessary. Make us agents of healing and wholeness within our innermost circles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
And finally, God, our sustainer, we pray for ourselves. You know us each even better than we know ourselves. Strengthen and renew us to be agents of healing and wholeness as we face this new week, new month, and still relatively new year. So Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. And together now we affirm our faith. I believe and trust in God, the source of all being who made the world. I believe and trust in God's Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in God's Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to share together in the peace and a reminder of that response, if you would like to use it, um, the, which is like, it always reminds me of a cat's, a cat's smile with whiskers. So peace, and then a coming together, be, and giving it away with you. Peace be with you. And if you'd like to put your video on to do that, you're more than welcome. And so we remind ourselves this morning that Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. So we come now to share in the bread and wine. And as we give thanks for these gifts, I do invite you to hold up the bread and the wine as we do so. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us, it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. We hold up the wine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us, it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times in all places to give you thanks and praise, source of all being, heavenly King, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks for his glorious resurrection from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored us to eternal life. Therefore, with angels, with archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example, as we obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. We hold up the bread. Who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke this bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We hold up the wine. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave the cup to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. 
For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so together we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once and for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection, his glorious ascension, and we look for his coming in glory, celebrating with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, source of all being, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And so as Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so the bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The risen Christ is present with us in the sacrament as we share it together. Let us spend a moment in silence to worship and adore him. And so we pray together. We come to this table not because we must, but because we may. Not because we are strong, but because we need strength. We come because we love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. We come because he loves us and gave himself for all. So the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so as we partake of the bread, either on our own or with those gathered with us, we say, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And as we share the wine together, we say, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And then just a prayer of blessing for those who may be with us who have not received communion this morning. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. And we ask for each one who may not have received but desires your blessing that your hand would rest upon them. That their lives may reflect your love. And that they may be your presence and your goodness in the lives of others. 
Amen. And so we've received from God in word and in sacrament this morning. Let us give thanks for the Lord is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. And we say together. Blessing and honour and thanksgiving and praise. More than we can utter, more than we can understand, be to you, O holy and glorious Trinity, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, from all angels, all people, all creatures, for ever and ever. We pray for our world and for ourselves in these uncertain times. God bless the world, give it wisdom at this time, and grant us relief and release. Be with those who are ill and bless the carers fighting this pandemic. Grant us the determination to walk in one another's shoes and the confidence and the humility to draw closer to you and to those affected. Strengthen us to pass to those who are ill, to weep for the dead, to support healers, and to care for and love one another. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. And we offer ourselves in service. God Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us to live to your praise and glory, amen. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And so dwell in peace, loving and serving the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you all so much for being part of this time of worship with us. Uh, we do have a number of birthdays this week. Uh, Andreas Nell and Aletta Ashmore both share uh, birthdays to, on the 10th, which is just around the corner. Uh, Aletta is with us. I think her video is off at the moment, but Aletta, very happy birthday uh, from all of us. And um, we have one anniversary, that is the Blumerises, Rosemary and Martin, they celebrate theirs tomorrow. So we hold uh, all those celebrating another year of life and another year of relationship in prayer. Um, just a reminder, and hopefully you do read the Pew leaflet that comes out on email, um, but there is a notice there about uh, upcoming confirmation processes. Um, Elizabeth would love to hear from anyone interested in being confirmed this year. Uh, we also have our prayer diary there, and there's a focus for each day, which I know some of us find helpful just in focusing our own personal prayers um, in, in, in our daily prayer. We, um, we, I, I will also be sending out during the week, uh, we'll be sending out information around um, our Ash Wednesday services, which take place uh, next, next Wednesday, the 17th. Um, as well as our upcoming Lent course. So that will all come out during the course of this week. So please look out for that in your email boxes. Um, and if I could ask too for your special prayers for St. Thomas Rondebosch, uh, they are preparing to receive their new rector, who is um, the, the Reverend Dr. Claire Hunter. Uh, they, she and the family arrive tomorrow and will be settling in and she will be ins instituted next Saturday afternoon in, in a limited attendance service. Um, so I'm hugely pleased as Archdeacon that I'm able to hand over responsibilities there this coming week. Um, but I think Claire is going to be a wonderful addition to our Archdeaconry and certainly to the life of St. Thomas. So please pray for her and Andrew and the family in this time and transition for them. Um, what I would like to do quickly is just, I see that, that um, uh, where are we going? A letter's video is on. There's a letter. Happy birthday, a letter. Have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead. Uh, wonderful week ahead. 
Super. Then I'm going to ask for those who'd like to just participate in these breakaway groups. I've just set them up literally for five minutes. There are about three or four of you, I think, in each group. Just a chance to actually say hi without being overwhelmed by, by 50 different machines saying hi to each other. Um, it'll automatically end in five minutes and kick you back into this forum. Uh, you have choice at any point either not to go into the group or to exit the group or to come back into the big, the bigger group. Um, but I thought I'd just like to try it because I think we've really been missing that more intimate fellowship we have during tea afterwards. So if you could put your, your um, videos and microphones on um, and just if you don't know the people you put into the group with, just share your name and perhaps where in Cape Town or in the world you live. Um, and maybe something just briefly about your connection to St. Andrews. Um, but nothing, no, no need to share the depth of your life, but just an opportunity to, to relate. So I'm going to quickly re-sign everything. And one, two, three, there we go. One, two, Thank mm -hmm. you. 